What is going on guys, MG2205 Gunner here and today I'm going to be reviewing the High Grade Atlas Gundam from the second season of Gundam Thunderbolt. So this is the next lead Gundam in the Thunderbolt franchise and actually looks pretty cool. And I really love like the reason that they built this. Because all like the other mobile suits are like ground type, space type, but where do you like omit most? Underwater combat. So I really love how this guy is designed. It has like kind of a surfboard already, despite not being in this flight mode. And the silhouette, uh, despite the giant like surfboard sub legs at the side, I actually like the slender looks. It doesn't look as bad as the silhouette itself, like the white proto silhouette. And I'm really proud of that. But stickers, despite the lot of yellow plastic, it still has a lot of stickers. So first off, of course, you have the eyes which are connected together, finally. You have the yellow trim here, yellow trim here, yellow trim down here. The yellow trim on the front and back of the chest. The yellow trim down here. The yellow trims on the stomach over here. The All the circles on all the joints. Except for these. So... The circles over here, the circles over here, the black ones over here that I I really cannot figure out a way to do much better. And let me see. I think that is it. Not a lot of stickers in terms of type, but putting on putting them on it's it's not hard but it's tedious. So and they really did a good job of hiding seam lines, it seems. Well, except for the joints anyway, so... That's gonna be all the details for the Atlas Gundam. So, for the articulation of this thing... This thing doesn't have polycap, so I cannot do it the usual way. So, you have a double-jointed neck. And you have rotating head. The arms... Are just typical you can put them up you can rotate them well everything is plastic on plastic so it's very very tight and then the arms can come out that far terrible the arms can rotate bend at the elbow at two joints wrist rotate if I can get the grip and wiggle the waist can swivel and then the crunch oh my god this is specialized for the underwater mode, or the submarine mode. And then the front skirts can move, side skirts are the sub legs, back skirts do not move at all. The legs, they do not go independently anywhere, but they can go forwards, backwards, outwards, all the way. Rotation at the hip, a double jointed knee, pretty nice looking. And then, the ankles. Let's get these out of the way. They can go forwards and back. S not side to side, as it seems. But they can rotate, and then the this toe piece can come out. Is that supposed to happen? I think that's not supposed to happen. There we go. Just to fit the shape of the surfboard. And then the sub legs. They can rotate at the waist. They can hinge in and out. They can rotate at this joint, but it's kind of hard to execute without the risk of breaking it. And then these are all fake joints, and then the actual actual sub leg over here. That you can move up and down, rotate, and then these can rotate, and the, this can rotate independently. So all in all, a lot of articulation, despite the fake joints over here. And the actual Gundam itself... Well, the ankles leave something to be desired. But, all in all, it has great posability for an underwater mobile suit. For accessories, you have the beam savers, which are stored inside of the shoulders. This is the first time, I think, Bandai made this me mechanism work on a high grade. And, inside... It doesn't have any pegs or some stuff, so you do not need to worry about breaking anything when you're trying to grab the beam saber out. 
But then it's just like a teeny tiny handle paired up with these double Zeta high grade size beam sabers. Well, kind of makes sense. You can just go into the hand like this and it doesn't have any pegs or something and this kind of hilt is kind of thick. So if you try to push it in the hand, it will come apart. So the best you can do is this. And then you have the blade shield, which is kind of like a diamond sheet, diamond metal sheet. And to pull this off, I will need to take off this to make it less troublesome. So let me tear off the entire arm for instance. So first off, you had to crack open the hand. This is one mechanism I hate, absolutely hate. And then you put the shield right in there. Actually, you rotate the rotate the hand and then put the shield here. Close up the hand. It took me quite a while. And then you put this piece in. Now you see the holes in the arm. So you, and you see the three pegs here, so it just goes in like this. And then what you try to do is to try and slot everything together without splitting the hand. So here we go, the blade shield. I don't understand why it is a blade. It, it kind of feels like the beam harmonica of the X-Divider. So that's that. And then you have two of these assault rifles. Yeah, and it comes with two of these like trigger finger hands. And it is it has a peg on either side so either hand can use it. So let me just switch this hand out for the other one. And it actually uses oh so well I had to demonstrate it anyways. So it actually uses physical projectiles, as it seems from the actual CGI. And finally, you have the railgun. And it actually looks pretty cool, like you have these three charges over here and then the beam emitter or something in the, in the center. It actually looks pretty cool. And it reminds me of something, but at the same time, it doesn't. It kind of reminds me of the beam smart gun of the, of the Banshee. So it has the the peg on the one side, and I equip this with the trigger finger hand, and you pull this apart. You peg the peg the railgun into the hand, close it up again, and then you put it back. Then finally, you need to bring in this piece. This piece basically secures the gun. So. You see these little kind of pegs over here? It goes into these grooves in the actual gun. So it locks the gun into the hand securely. And at the same time, the yellow piece goes into the arm. So the gun is not going anywhere. And it doesn't seem to have weight issues since the connections are all plastic on plastic. So there you have it. Now for the fun part, the gimmicks. So let's transform him into his flight mode first. So all you need to do is to make sure that these parts are facing down and then you rotate them and then you try to fiddle around with the joints and until you get these holes to go into these pegs. And try to not disconnect this piece of armor. And he's literally surfboarding in the air. So this is roughly its flight mode. Pretty nice looking. Nothing too like special. It, it is special because it, it seems like it has like a base jabber under his feet. Built into the actual suit. And you got to see the thrusters over here. It, oh the thrusters can move. Okay. Yeah since my brother built this I never really have time to dig into it. And then, the fun part, the actual submarine mode. Okay, so, you got to take these out, of course. Well, you can make him standing if you want, but I will lie him down. 
lie them down, and then rotate these that, so that they are facing up, and then bring in the blade shield. So, you use the same pegs from the for the legs, and then you peg, you slot in the blade shield using the two sides. If I can get it right. And then basically what you do is to fiddle around with the joints until the entire Gundam is lying inside. And then you use the crunching joint. And here you have the submarine mode. And to be honest, this is compact and I like it. Well, if you don't pose it and you just make him around, it actually looks like a transport unit underwater for the Gundam. If you want to make him surfboard, let me try and do it because I never really tried. Well, here's a rough idea. So that's all the accessories for the Atlas Gundam. So let me get that railgun out of your face just so you don't feel as uncomfortable. So for comparisons, the only relevant comparison that I have is the original Granddaddy Gundam. These two do not look quite good together simply because they do not... Yeah, they come from the same timeline but they are not from the same era. And so this is kind of have, have like those bright colors while this kind of has a dull color scheme. So that is it for the Atlas Gundam. I have to say I am pretty satisfied with the unique gimmicks that this guy has to offer. And simply because it, ha it has an underwater mode makes me like really start to grow on this kit. Despite it taking up a lot of space, the surfing mode is the actual signature that makes me promise my brother to get this kit for him. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and also subscribe for more gaming videos, mod reviews, and all that kind of stuff. S tell me in the comments below what do you think of this kit and are you hyped about the actual coming anime? And if you s are watching this after the anime has came out, tell me what you think about the Atlas Gundam in the actual show. So, and also forget, don't forget to subscribe to Ultra Prime, Ace Videos, and Pure Sentence if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out guys. Bye bye.